rather than learning how to sharpen, <laughs> I decided I was just going to make a 2 by 42 belt sander. I started with the motor and a rough idea of how I wanted to lay it out. For the layout, I used Fusion 360 and just started with some circles and then drew some lines to connect them. And this way I was able to get the belt path. And from there, I could fine tune it so that it was exactly 42 inches, plus and minus a little bit for the tensioner and any sort of variance in the belts. By the way, if you are interested in building one of these, you are more than welcome to follow along or make sure you subscribe. And I'm going to be releasing the version two of this in an upcoming video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. All the rollers were basically the same. They were three pieces of plywood with bearings, shims, and a bolt. All I'm using is a 3 8 bolt. It's cheap, it's dirty, but it works really well for a system like this that's not really meant to be going really fast. And I used that for the tension roller, the two guide rollers, and, and the tracking roller which I ended up getting rid of later. And for the drive wheel, originally I wanted something that would directly go in the shaft, but the shaft has a taper on it that there's no way it would actually be able to match. So instead of trying to mess with that, I designed a wheel that will go on top of the pulley that it came with. This way I don't have to worry about the taper. It's already there for me. Once I was happy with the layout of where the rollers were gonna go, I started to place the body around it. Originally, it was just gonna be a one-face design, so there's only going to be a back panel. I quickly realized that this was not going to work at all. The force that would go on to the belt was just too strong, and the pulleys would immediately flex. So I made a front plate that's much smaller. It doesn't have, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. And this is so that I can easily put on and take off the belts. Then I added some ribs in here so that I could get square alignment and it wouldn't flex as much. Before I got to all the cutting, I decided it was a good idea to make a test panel so I could figure out exactly how everything would fit in. And I was really happy with how the ribs would fit. It did take a little bit of love from a hammer to get them in. And I had to wrap the corners, so I added dog bones. But besides that, I was very happy with it. I still didn't have a way for this to stand up nicely. So I added some feet to the bottom of the back plate and just did very simple triangular feet and did three of them. These fit nicely into a base so that the entire assembly holds really, really strong. And that wobble is actually just from some screws on the bottom sticking out. And the tension arm mounts the tension pulley. It's held on with the same 3 8 bolt system that I was doing for the rest of the pulleys. And I just used a very dirty, some screws and rubber bands for the actual tension. Now that I was happy with the design and I was pretty sure everything was gonna fit together nicely, I started programming the CNC. Now, I manually nested everything in here, and if you're interested in how I did that, I made a video of exactly how I do it, and I'll leave that in the description. For this design, I used an eighth inch compression bit so that I would have nice clean cuts going throughout. Now, you'll see that I still added ribs, although a lot of times you don't have to use ribs when using a compression bit. If you're cutting a round part, a lot of times you do because the round part can stick. So I added the ribs. I started cutting, left the shop for a couple minutes, and I crashed. Sadly, I thought this was my last eighth inch bit, but I had enough to get started. Immediately, I found a couple flaws, one being the alignment holes for the pulleys were not big enough, and I didn't have a quarter inch drill to actually be able to go through and clear them out. I ended up using a quarter inch end mill instead. It definitely didn't work quite as well as I would have liked or as well as a quarter inch drill would have done, but I used it anyway and I was able to get it aligned pretty well. So I hammered through with the dowels. And 
then I added the bearings in. The bearings fit really, really tight into the pockets. So what I ended up doing was using the, my axles basically, my 3 8 bolt. I put the washers on the ends and then just a nut and tighten them together. This pulled the bearing into place. And from that setup, I put the bolt into the drill and sanded it smooth. I wasn't too worried about perfection on this one. This worked really, really well, except for the traction pulley. I tried to do a nice taper going up to help with traction, but it became a really funky shape and I just wasn't able to do it well. For the next version, I'm gonna have to do either a 3D print or maybe a 3D carve on the CNC. But I kept moving. I really wanted to get this finished, so I hopped back on cam and had to redo some of the nesting so that I could cut the rest of the pieces out. Since I crashed the last one, I needed to use a different bit. I wanted to stick with an eighth inch end mill, kept digging in the drawer, and eventually I actually found an old compression bit that was also eighth inch. I thought I was good to go. This bit must have been used pretty well in a past project because the edges definitely didn't come out as clean, but with a little clean off and a chisel, we were good to go. I started aligning all the ribs and they fit into the back plate extremely nicely. So I tried to put on the front plate, but it was almost impossible to align them. So what I had to do was get a chisel and put a chamfer on all of the edges. And then using a little bit of love from a hammer and some clamps, I was able to get them to squeeze together to make sure that the rollers didn't bind against the sides of the tool. I had to modify some smaller washers using a step drill. And this allows the rollers to spin really freely. Then I installed all the rollers. I added screws into the tension arm, put some inserts into the body, and just used rubber blank rubber bands as the spring. The next step was to mount the motor. I chose this motor because it's pretty powerful, it's inexpensive, and I can also adjust the speed. It can go as low as 200 RPM, and I think it goes all the way up to, well, let's find out. And it can go all the way up to 4,500. Which is obviously too fast, and I'm never going to be using it that fast on here. The fastest I'll ever go is probably about 500. And I'll make sure I leave a link in the description for this and any other parts that I recommend for this build. And with the dry fit, it fit really, really well. Tracking was insanely smooth, a lot smoother than I thought. So I marked down where the screws would go, put it together, and the tracking was completely off. It didn't work at all. I ended up removing the original mount and having to fin finagle it with different washer spacings to be able to get it to track at all. Once I got it what I thought was as close as I could, I decided to start fighting it with the tracking wheel rather than the motor. I moved the tracking wheel up and down and was not able to get that to work either. I ended up completely removing the tracking wheel and throwing it all the way in the back. So we're one less pulley but it seemed to be tracking better, but not perfectly. It was still slowly shifting one way or the other. But luckily, I was able to just feather the back tension arm and get it to track going one way or the other, whether I pushed down or pulled up. Now, I was at a point that was close enough to be able to start sharpening. And I was able to get a very nice finish on all my chisels, except they are a little bowed. And this is because my force plate right here, we call it a force plate, is still significantly lower than the belt. So when I pushed the chisel into it, it started to kind of bow around it. Overall, for a first attempt, I'm really, really happy with this. Version two is gonna have a lot of different upgrades, mostly the tracking, 
I'm going to set up the motor so it's not direct drive anymore. Instead, I'm going to run it from a pulley like it should have been run from the first place. This will allow me to have perfect alignment from the start rather than having to finagle the motor. I'm going to stiffen up the tension arm so that I can actually have springs on both sides or rubber bands to get even pressure on both sides of the belt and I won't be using it for tracking anymore. If you want to see how that turns out, make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you for the next video.